Today, we're wishing a very happy birthday to Beethoven. If Beethoven had been alive today, he would be 246 years old. But did you know that the infamous composer went deaf in his 30s? While he continued to create great works of music, he also had several other ailments, and ultimately, he demanded an autopsy be performed once he died. Let's take a look at our ears and how we hear sounds before going into the results found in the autopsy. What we call sound is actually waves moving through the air. The part of your ear that you can see, the auricle, catches these waves and funnels them into your ear, to your eardrum. The waves cause your eardrum to move, and in turn, this moves the malleus, incus, and stapes. The stapes moves against your cochlea, causing fluid within the cochlea to move. How much this fluid moves, and how it moves, is determined by the sound wave that started the process. And as the fluid moves, small hairs pick up on the movement and send signals to your brain, telling you which pitches and tones you are hearing. Beethoven started to go deaf in his late 20s and early 30s. The first signs were tinnitus and losing the ability to hear higher tones. If we look at the cochlear, you distinguish higher tones toward the beginning of the cochlear. The further into the spiral of the cochlear we go, the deeper the tones you hear. When this is correlated to Beethoven's music, you can see that he used high and low tones in his early work. But after he started going deaf, his music tended to be in the lower tone ranges. As his deafness progressed, he eventually lost all hearing and instead composed from memory, which resulted in music that is much more similar to his early work. So what did his autopsy reveal? Medicine wasn't as advanced at the time as it is today, so all we have are speculations with no definitive answers as to what exactly caused his deafness. What we do know from the autopsy was that Beethoven's ear cartilage and skull were much thicker than usual, pinching some of his auditory nerves causing them to be very thin and shriveled. His scaphoid dimple was enlarged, as were the auditory arteries. Could Beethoven have heard sound differently than the rest of us? Could this have been part of the reason he composed such amazing work? We will never know entirely. What do you think?